on your running shoes. Yes, we need to be running this race. Have you ever, you know, stopped to say, I'm going to take the stairs instead of the elevator. And you decided to walk six flights, four flights, two flights of stairs. Or you said, you know what, I'm going to park my car away from the grocery store so I can get those extra steps in. Or you decided to walk the long hallway of a conference, uh, you know, and you had a long way to go. Or you decided to run a 5K or, or walk a 5K. And out of all of these four, you discovered that, you know what, I have on the wrong shoes. These shoes, I tell you, I'm breathing okay. It's not that. I, I, I think I can do it as far as the stamina to have the breath to get there or what have you. But I realize my feet are hurting and I have on the wrong shoes. And so you had to stop along the way. You had to rest along the way. You had to limp <laughs> along to what the way to get where you were going. Or you had to sit down and rest a while. Or you simply just turn around and say, no, I can't make it. Because you had on the wrong shoes. Have you ever been there before? I know I have. So, so, so. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 24, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So on today, we're going to talk about put on your running shoes as we run this race, as we walk and run this race, this life, this race of life that God has given us here on earth. We as Christians, we are running a race and we are running to win. Well, first of all, we already know that we are winners because we are more than conquerors. Yes, we are. We are champions already. We are more than conquerors. And, but we are running also to obtain the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We are running because there is a crown of righteousness laid up for us. And we are running not just to run for ourselves, but we are running to help others along the way. You know, when people are in a race or in a marathon or things of that nature, when they get to the finish line and they realize, you know, my partner, my friend, someone is, uh, has fallen along the way, they turn around and go back and get that person and they might have to limp <laughs> they might have to limp across the line they might have to crawl across the line they might have to push each other across the line but nevertheless they get across the line you know when someone is uh, running uh, a short distance, doing a little sprint run or whatever, they train and they focus in on speed. But when uh, a person is training a long distance runner, they focus on endurance endurance and that's what we have to have we are training for the long haul we are training for the long run we have to have endurance hebrews 10 and 36 says for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of god you may receive what is promised you have need for endurance well you say what is endurance endurance is the power to stick it out it's the power to tolerate an uh, 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 unpleasant situation or a difficult process or, or just to go through without giving way, without giving out, without stopping, without saying I can't do it, or without saying I'm not going to make it and turning around. The power. And where does the power come from? I know you already know. The power comes from on high. The power comes from our God. So when we're talking about in endurance for this race, we have to have endurance to go through. Now, now when we run a race, a race that a race, the race that we run, there are some things that you have to do, just like in the natural, you have to prepare for that race that you're running. You know, you got to be prepared for it. Number one, you got to enter the race. You can't just jump up and say, oh, 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 well, I decided uh, today uh, 
at the at the ten tenth hour, I'm going to run this race. No, you got to you have to enter the race, and just just like it is with Christians, we have to give our lives over to God. We have to submit our will over to God. We have to enter this thing called the Christian walk. We have to enter in, and so that's number one. We must enter. Amen. We must accept uh, Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. We must yield to the will of God. We have to enter in. And then number two, it's a lot of things you have to do when you're running a race. But these are some of the main things. Train. You got to train for a race. You can't just get out there after you ate a whole hog, after you ate all of the barbecue, every french fry you could find. You can't just get out there. You have to train, condition yourself for the run. You have to condition yourself for the endurance, for the long haul, for the long period. You have to condition yourself. And so it is with the word of God. We have to study and and then not just study, but we have to apply the word to our everyday life. What is that word again? Apply it. Not just, you know, sometimes I used to hear people say, you know, and be doers of the word. You know, sometimes we could just read the word, but when it, when situations and concerns and, and, and problems uh, and anything, all things that come up in our life, in this walk, in this run, sometimes we just don't uh, 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 go in and yield to the will of God. But we have to train ourselves to a, apply the word of God in our everyday walk, in our everyday situation. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So we know that's what we do. So how do we wrestle against this? We have to study the word of God. We have to make sure that when we, you know, sometimes it's just like when you go to walk. You know, it's hard getting out there. You know, it's hard getting up out of that bed saying, I'm going to walk. I'm going to do it. But once you get out there, once you finish, you feel so much better. First of all, you just happy that you did it. You know, half of the process is just getting up and getting out. And the other part will just come naturally. So so when you start talking about walking and, do, and, and reading the word of God and applying the word of God to your situation, you're going to feel better. Yeah, you're going to feel better. You're going to be better. You're going to look better. You're going to walk better. Listen, don't get me started about better because I know once we stand on the word of God, we know that we can do better. Amen. He said, cast all our cares up on him because he cares for us. He's concerned about every situation along your run, along your walk. And then number three, uh, the third one is that you must have a proper diet. You just can't eat any and everything and feel like you could just still be a runner now, be a marathon runner and, and all of that. And so it is with the word of God. You know, it's a whole lot going on now. It's a whole lot of people talking. It's a whole lot of people saying a whole lot of things. And that's all right. And, but the thing about it is everything is not the word of God. And we have to know, we have to have an ear to to hear what the spirit is saying. We have to know what the Bible is saying. You know, a lot of the versions of the Bible, you have to be careful about those as well because some things have been taken away. Some things have been put in. And so we just have to be careful about that, that we are eating the right thing because you might hear the wrong thing. You know, people might say the wrong thing. It's all right to listen. It's all right to hear it. But listen, don't digest it. You don't need to be chewing on it. You don't need to be smacking on it. You don't let it need to get all down in your spirit because you need to stand on the word of God. How do we stand on the word of God? We read it, ask the Lord to give us clear revelation and amen, apply it to our life. So we have to have the right diet. I'm so excited about that. And listen, so I, those are the things I want to talk about as far as, you know, training for the run and all of that. But number one is that I think that's most important. You have to get the right shoes. You need to put the right shoes on your feet so you can move out. Listen, your feet, your feet. If your feet don't move, guess what? You won't move. 
<laughs> your feet is going to gonna, uh, um, uh, see if you are mobile or, or, or if you are immobile. But if you don't have your feet, if your feet not feeling right, if your feet are squares in and all the blood ha- have left your feet and, and you know you hurting and, you, and you know, when your feet hurt, listen, everything start hurting. Your, 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 your legs start hurting and your arms start hurting. Your head start hurting. And you realize, listen, there's something going on with these shoes. These shoes of mine are killing my feet. And you know what? They're killing me. I cannot move out and do the things that I need to do. So listen, we are running a race. Get you some running shoes. Get you some good gym shoes. Get you what you need to wear and, and wear them out. You know, don't bust out uh, 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 and, and you come out with, uh, with um, you know, um, some stilettos on. I love heels. You know, if any, as anybody else, I love them and everything. But listen, they're not r- right for running. They are not for endurance. They're not. <laughs> the heels are for uh, a time period to get you maybe from one office to another or one place, maybe an hour, maybe two. But heels are not for the endurance. Heels are not for the long haul. So don't be busting out with some heels on in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Heels are kind of high. You know, I think about that. I say, you know, you can't be, think you so high minded over people and things of that nature. And, but the heels and shoes, tight shoes, They'll squeeze, and they'll squeeze the life out of you, you know, and where you can't think right, where you can't walk right, or where you can't run right, where you can't smile right. You just can't give God a praise right. <laughs> so we have to be careful how we walk, what we have on our, on our feet. Also, I'm going to tell you one another shoe, flip-flops. Don't go around just flip-flop and think you're going to run a a good race. Because when I think about flip-flops, I think about people being one way one day and being another way another day. You know, back and forth mentally, you got situation going on unstable. I've heard people uh, say being wishy-washy or or sometimey, you know, you know, bipolar in the spirit. You know, you don't want to be your face way up on the mountaintop one day and the next day your face way down in the valley low. Uh, you down in Lodi Bar with your faith. And so we want to make sure that we're not flip-flopping around, but that we, we are consistent in the things of God. And one more I'm going to talk about, and this is kind of funny, but your house shoes. Your house shoes are not for wearing on the outside. I don't care how pretty they are. I don't care if they got that little bunny head up there with the two ears flopping. I don't care. Listen, they not made for pavement. You wear those house shoes out, you're going to get a hole for sure. They're not prepared for the rain and the storm. They're not prepared for the mud you got to walk through and all of the potholes you got to step in. Don't be running around. In other words, house shoes are very soft and, and, and they give in and things like that. And the word, listen, that they will not help you. But, but in the spirit, we can't walk around in house shoes and being in a soft place all the time. We need something that's going to replenish us, that's going to grow us, that's going to build us up. I, I, that's, be prepared uh, to run this race. Get you some good gym shoes. Listen, go out with your gym shoes on. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Ephesians 6 and 15 says, Our feet should be shown with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And, 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 that's all I'm saying on today. We need to make sure that we have our feet shone with the preparation of the gospel, the gospel, the good news of peace. Amen. That we can carry it along the lines that we will not be distracted when we're running the race. You know, you can't be over there waving at the crowd on the side talking about, hey, how you doing? And you're trying to focus in on your race. You cannot be distracted. You don't want to be distracted. You must, you must focus in uh, so we can have endurance. So make sure you put on the right shoes when you prepare to run this race. We have to have on the right shoes. Amen. Because we're in it for the long haul. We're in it. Amen. For endurance. And we are winners and we are champions. How about that on today? Well, I'm just excited. I am excited because I know I have on some running shoes and listen, I'm going to be getting on down. I, I listen, I might pass you waving or what have you, but I know you're back there and you might be in front of me and I might catch up to you and catch on to your shirt and you pull me on up. But nevertheless, I am running this race and I want you to run it with me. All right. 
All right, God bless you. Father God, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity, God. We thank you for this race that we're running, God. We know you said greater work shall we do. And so, God, we're running. We're running now, oh God, with the vision. We're running with the plan, God. We're running, God, that some soul might say, what must I do to be saved? God, we pray now that you touch someone with your spirit. Oh God, let them know that you have something for them to do. And God, give them the shoes to put on. Don't let them desire to wear someone else's shoes, God, but let them desire to wear their own shoes so they can be fit for the journey. God, we love you now. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and we count it done. Well, my friends, thank you so much for joining, joining me for Perfecting Vessels. We're excited over here at Perfecting Vessels. I want you to continue to uh, tune in, to like, share, subscribe. Amen. Be with me uh, anytime and call. Do whatever you need to do. We love you. We look forward to seeing you next time. Where? Right here on Perfecting Vessels. God bless. You have been watching Perfecting Vessels with Lady Shirley. Join us every Friday at noon where we offer personal empowerment and continuous motivation to strengthen God's vessels. Lady Shirley ministers to women all ages and all across this country. If you like the message you saw today, please sow a seed of faith into the ministry. You may sow through Cash App at dollar sign Perfecting Vessels or through Givelify, Holy Nation Ministries, and be sure to check Perfecting Vessels. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, continue to perfect your vessel.